A special thanks to my patrons. Making videos is a lot of time and effort, so if you like what I do, please become a patron. You probably won't get anything for doing so, but it helps me out a lot. Thank you. I highly recommend trying the Jade Blooded Vampires, the Curse of Nong Chang mod by Paul Yanan. This mod adds a new faction of vampires from the east with really great lore, and also fun new mechanics, units, and aesthetics. The Jade Blooded Vampires are an exotic bloodline of vampires in the Far East sired by a long lost spawn of Neferata thousands of years after she and the rest of the original vampires had fled the destruction of Lamia. Commanding fearsome hordes of both skeletal foot soldiers and ethereal monstrosities, the Jade Blooded Vampires are an implacable force on the battlefield against armies that mostly rely on more conventional weaponry and lack reliable offensive magical powers. They also possess a unique lore of magic, the lore of the Jade Blooded, which is derivative of Nagash's own art of necromancy, supplanting the invocation of ancient dark arts from Nehikara with their own mystical rites from Grand Café. While lacking in offensive spells, the lore of the Jade Blooded boasts severely harmful curses, as well as being able to conjure an army of ghosts from the Cathayan underworld. The Jade Blooded Vampires don't use the usual Raised Dead mechanic like the other Vampire Count factions do. Instead, they have a Raised Spirits mechanic which can only be used to raise the faction's spirit units. Regular undead must be recruited in the usual way. As a somewhat Cathayan faction, they also benefit from the Yin Yang mechanic. Typically, your frontline troops like skeletons are Yang, while your cultists and monsters are Yin. This encourages a mixture of units, which is very cool. One of the coolest things about the faction is that as your enemies die in battle, a bar on the right of the screen accumulates points. These points can then be spent on powerful battle abilities. These abilities are unlocked via corrupting the Lake Shrine in Nongchang. In gameplay terms, this translates into constructing and upgrading a unique structure. The first of these abilities is called Sinking, and it causes all enemies to take constant damage, as well as suffer reduced speed and defense. It's a subtle thing, but it really does make a big difference in battle, because not only are all enemies debuffed, but they're also all taking damage. The second ability is called Drowning, and it causes a lot more damage and also reduces enemy leadership. It can be used along with Sinking, and these two abilities together really contribute immensely to your success in combat. The final ability is called Convergence, and summons a large amount of sinful monks, a kind of undead to battle. The sinful monks seem to be a type of strong zombie, or something like that, and are great to drop right into a bunch of archers or enemy artillery, or to help plug a hole in your offensive line. I've found that these abilities really are core to the faction's success in battle, and your hardest fights will be ones where you cannot make use of these abilities. Enemy armies that don't have a lot of plentiful, weak units to die and fill your meter with can be challenging to deal with. For this reason, some of the hardest battles have been against High Elves because they field small numbers of high quality units along with stuff like dragons. This won't fill your bar up much, whereas when fighting Greenskins, Skaven or other undead, your bar is going to be full all the time. The mod implements a new path of magic called the Lore of the Jade Blooded which is derivative of Nagash's own art of necromancy. But it's much more about curses and the summoning of ghosts and spirits. When choosing to recruit a new lord, you can decide whether their magic will be lore of the Jade Blooded or the usual lore of vampires. Another bunch of unique spells are granted to the Ancestor Witch. More on that later. Let's begin by taking a look at the unit roster. We'll begin with the lords. All the lords available to this faction are wizards, but they do pretty well in melee combat. The Maiden of the Black Lotus is your faction leader, and she is just absolutely awesome. I love this leader, she's a wizard and doesn't deal that much damage initially, but's really good at just surviving, which is what you want in an undead leader in my opinion. She's beautiful and has interesting lore, and she gets stupidly strong as you level her up. She eventually gets an insane mount that makes her a one-woman army, I'll read the lore to you, paraphrased by me. The Maiden of the Black Lotus's origins are mired in superstition and generations of Cathayan folklore. Some say a girl, no older than 15 summers, had been taken by a holy man to be offered at one of the many sacred water templates that dot the basin of Nongchang. In an attempt to contain all the malevolent powers that torture the land, multiple seals were placed upon the sacrifice. 
With a plunge of the dagger, the maiden was put to rest. For a time, it seemed that Nong Chang had found peace. However, soon the dark powers proved too much for even the chosen vessel. An evil taint began to leak into the waters and sept into the land itself. The mod author goes on to describe the maiden further. Hei Lianhua itself is not actually a jade-blooded vampire, but a marionette being puppeteered by a concentration of all the evils of Nong Chang. Barely sentient, if at all, the Maiden of the Black Lotus doesn't speak, and in battle, it moves about in place by the dark forces reanimating it and is capable of blasting foes with jet black energies. The Maiden of the Black Lotus design and general concept is inspired by the stringy haired ghost girls of Asian horror fame, especially J horror. She also resembles a Japanese Ningyo doll. So, all of that is incredibly awesome in my books. But let's talk about this awesome final mount she gets. Look at this thing. It's like a gigantic mongol that's been dunked in a barrel of grudge sauce and it destroys everything. It's fast like hell, it's got an insane charge rating, it demolishes gates, it's incredible and I love everything about it. I'd like to point out that all battles that can't be won via auto resolve should be battled manually when it comes to armies with the maiden. The algorithm doesn't appreciate how much of a beast she truly is. Does it feel overpowered? Not really. I play on very hard difficulty, and you really need it. The Jade-Blooded Master Warlock is similar to a Master Necromancer from the Vampire Counts, and also has his voice, although he does seem to perform better in melee combat. Aesthetically, he's an undead Cathayan wreathed in teal flame, and he looks just awesome. Master Warlocks can be recruited with either the lore of the Jade-Blooded, or the standard lore of Nagash spells. They make use of really cool attacks during battle too. The Jade-Blooded Matron is a female cafe and lord, and is slightly better in melee than the Master Warlock. She seems to be an actual vampire of the bloodline. It uses the animations from Solostra Deofin, and I think that this is an understandable choice because Solostra has a fan in her hand and is floating, but I don't like it. Solostra is a fat, frumpy like Ursula from The Little Mermaid, whereas the Matron seems to be more of a lady. Perhaps my impression is wrong, and the Matrons are also supposed to be fat frumpies, but I'd much rather have a different set of animations on the Matrons. It's also noisy like Solostra, always wailing and stuff on the world map. The Ancestor Witch is harder to obtain than the other Lords, and can only be recruited by starting a right with a very long cooldown. She looks really cool, straight out of an Asian horror movie and also comes with some very unique spells that you won't find on the other lords. Her unique spells all damage her health a little bit, but have very interesting effects. For example, she has a spell that causes madness and damage in a line. It's a bit like a weaker but much more available form of the storm from the Sword of Cain. Another spell can only target a single unit that's winning in melee. It manifests like a hammer that deals damaging explosions upon the unit. Unfortunately, these explosions also do friendly fire. I found this spell to be devastating against powerful enemy troops, but not very useful against characters like lords or heroes. There's also a spell which consumes a large amount of health, but makes a big and highly damaging vortex. She also has a few powerful summons, all of which summon units which are out of control and do their own thing. I quite like this. The new guy are similar in role and function to the Vampire Count's Banshees, but they're of course themed to better fit the Cathayan undead style. The Jangjun Revenant is basically a Cathayan version of a White King. It has the added benefit of being anti-large, which really helps against all the gigantic annoying stuff Cathay is constantly throwing at you, like the big terracotta boys and the jade lions, etc. Jade-blooded courtesans are female vampire heroes. They're Malay specialists, but have slightly different abilities than the new guy. I think you could equate them with Tomb Princes from the Tomb Kings faction. The Chandler is a wizard unit and is the weakest of the heroes in melee, but has access to the most spells. They're especially good at summoning spirits. The cultist units are yin units that are most useful to complement the yang of other units like your ghosts and skeletons. They're not very strong in melee, but they're not awful either. As living units, they will rout if their morale drops enough and cannot be healed by the lore of vampire spells, but the lore of the jade-blooded can heal them. The basic cultists are called chanters and have blades, while the fancier cultists wield occult lanterns and deal magical damage. 
and can also summon ghosts once per battle. The returned are Yang Skeleton Warrior units which come in two forms, dual swords and spears. These units seem much better than the Skeleton Warriors that the Vampire Counts get. Maybe it's the benefit from the Yin Yang stuff, or perhaps the upgrades via research. The returned also have different animations than Vampire Count Skeletons. They use the same animations as the zombies from the Vampire Coast, so they stumble around and stuff. The returned are actually really good troops. Both variants will occasionally go on the rampage, which causes them to go into a frenzy and become uncontrollable. It's technically a downside, but I like it, and I think it suits their disorganized style and animations for them to be a tad uncontrollable like that. Revenants are the heavy duty versions of skeletons and are heavily armored Yang warriors. They have either great swords or hellbirds. Both types are fantastic, and if you can afford it, they will make a big difference over the regular skeletons. I'm a sucker for heavily armored skeleton warriors, so these guys really float my coffin. Revenants will also never go on the rampage, and they will stand neatly in their ranks and have more orderly animations. Gorehags are yin units and are similar to crypt fiends from the vampire counts, but they do their job much better and have been made into female horrors. They've got a really fast charge and really do make mincemeat of enemy archers and softer infantry. They struggle against heavily armored infantry and spears and that type of thing, but overall they're a great unit and definitely one of my favorites. Their main drawback is their low leadership, which causes them to start crumbling when they meet stiff resistance. The Mogwai are described as malevolent monsters from the Dark Underworld, and they serve a similar function as trolls or crypt horrors. They're big bruisers and good at pulverizing weaklings, but are vulnerable to arrows, spears, and quality troops. If you look at their eyes, they're actually surprisingly scary. I think they're possibly the scariest unit in the entire mod if you just take the face into account. At first I thought the Yagwai was a reskinned Vargov, because it has similar proportions but it's actually got the animations of a gorilla. It also has a gorilla-like head and arms. In any case, this unit does perform a similar role as a Vargolf. It's a big hulking beast that likes to smash, and it has these cute little wings on it, despite being quite scary otherwise. I love it. Unearthed laborers are a yang unit and are fun, but I believe they don't work properly in campaign mode. If you use them in skirmish mode, they have this nice ranged attack and once out of ammo, they become like tougher zombies. But when used in campaign, they are always uncontrollable. I don't know if that's a bug or me not using them properly or what. Zhang Shi are described as not being vampires, but instead being a type of vampiric corpse. I asked a friend who knows Mandarin what Zhang Shi means, and they told me it means hopping vampire. I've also observed them hopping during combat, so that's cool. They also have a spell they can cast once per battle to deal damage to the enemy over time. You can think of them as really tough undead cultists because they are yin units and are a great late game replacement to the cultists. Their main drawback is that they are extremely slow until they reach the enemy and start hopping. Cultists are a better choice for fast moving yang forces. Blood lions are the faction's elite yang troops. They're heavily and ornately armored vampire warriors with blood red oriental armor, halberds, and capes. Their movement speed is relatively slow, slower than the skeletons at least but their charge is extremely fast. These guys are the ultimate badass infantry unit of the faction. They're as much of an upgrade from the Revenants as Blood Knights are over Black Knights for the Vampire Counts faction. Lucia Revenants fill a similar role into the Jade-Blooded Vampires as the Black Knights serve the Vampire Counts. I think the difference is mostly aesthetic, but not entirely, because they seem to be closer to the Cavalry of Cathay than what the Vampire Counts have. They're high quality cavalry and look awesome, in addition to performing very well. I've found that against tougher enemies like elves, who field loads of dragons, eagles, etc. You really can't rely on the weak spirits anymore. The answers seem to be lots of these guys. Wild ghosts are the weakest kind of spirit on offer to the faction. They're very fast and aren't hindered by terrain because of how they're ethereal, but they're also not very strong and have poor leadership. They can be upgraded to have force fields, which makes them a bit better. The stronger version of the Wild Ghost, the Ravenous Ghost, takes constant damage until it is engaged with the enemy. Both types of ghosts are your weakest troops on offer, but oftentimes, especially early on or when you're on campaign, these are the only things available.
Starved Marquis are similar to mournful haunters, and they suffer from the same hungering curse as the ravenous ghosts do, and take constant damage while not in combat. They're very useful, especially for dealing with softer targets like archers, and have a really devastating charge. They don't have vanguard deployment and are also pretty squishy, especially with the curse chewing away at their health. If you're a fan of Asian horror movies like The Grudge, you'll appreciate The Pale Lady. It's basically the woman from The Grudge, only made gigantic. It has vanguard deployment and stealth. It's really good at taking out squishy targets like archers and artillery. Pale ladies also have a curse they can cast once per battle, and it's basically a death sentence to a unit. It has three phases, and the first phase is a simple debuff to leadership. The second phase begins after 180 seconds and deals damage over time, in addition to stronger debuffs. If they survive the second phase, the final phase will kick in after a while and deal extremely heavy damage. This curse can't be used on heroes or lords, just regular units, but it is extremely useful. The accursed Diao Sigui are extremely cool units. They're like flying, multi-headed women from the grudge that shoot projectiles at enemies, which explode on impact and spawn a ghostly hand, which reaches up and grabs enemies before dragging them to the ground. Despite being a large flying unit, it is capable of hiding in trees, which can be tactically useful. It's very weak against enemy flying units, and also can't handle being shot at, but is a fantastic siege unit for clearing battlements with, and is also great to have floating over your troops in land battles, for that yin benefit. Due to its extreme movement speed, it can be set to melee mode and used to attack archers or artillery. It also does really well against densely packed weaker enemies like zombies. The Underworld Gate Guardian is a bull-headed colossus and can be spawned as a temporary summon alongside a devastating spell from the lore of the Jade Blooded, which is similar to Pit of Shades from the Shadow School of Magic, except it also summons this guy. He can also be recruited as a regular permanent unit. The Cursed Jade Carriage is a crazy and powerful unit that is a haunted carriage that moves on its own and has a giant grudge face on it. The unit moves very quickly and has a powerful cannon-like ranged attack, in addition to spinning around and damaging enemies in melee. It's one of the last units you're able to get and it's well worth the wait. There's a few extra units that I've skipped over, I haven't made use of during these during campaign yet and this video is already getting way too long and I'm running out of steam, but all the main ones have been covered. I'm scoring Jade Blooded Vampires, The Curse of Nong Chang, a solid 10 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. It's a great faction and so much fun to play. I highly recommend you check it out and give it a try. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been informative. I've got more videos and necromancy stuff coming soon.